Okay, question number two, I think what was the color of light to stimulate these phosphors when it's, the plate is being read in the reader? The red light. And it's red. Wasn't that funny? When the, well, I, I gave the answer in the question. Okay, anyway. Okay, so it's a red. It's a red laser light. Remember this picture? Okay, so you have the red laser light. And your book talks about this. There's a fast scan and a slow scan. So the plate is going through the rollers slowly, and the red light is going back and forth very quickly and stimulating these phosphors. And so it's a red laser light. What color is the light that the phosphors emit when stimulated? Blue. 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 Sweet. And then what is the color of light used to erase this whole thing? White. White light. So um, a couple things you can do, and I don't think I talked about this last time, some of the things you can do if you think an imaging plate has an exposure on it and you want to get rid of it, uh, if you don't know this, I can show you today um, or in lab, there is a, you can put a plate into the reader and erase it without having to read it, without having to connect it to your name in the computer. So there's a, a button you can push and there's a primary eraser and a secondary eraser. Primary eraser means it's going to be in there longer and making sure that everything's, everything's off. off. If you think, I'm not sure that there's anything on here, it's been sitting out, I don't know, maybe you, you can do a secondary erasure, which is quicker, if you think it's just fog. Okay, the other thing you can do is take it out, you can put it under, um, put it up against an illuminator, turn, on, uh, turn it on, <laughs> and put it up against the illuminator, or just leave it out um, to the light. That will help dissipate any exposure that might be on there. Um, the next question was what? What, what was the, the purpose of the protective coat? Yeah. To protect. To protect what? The, the phosphorus. The phosphor. Okay. Um, I think the next one, I said, what was the reflective layer? Is that the next mm -hmm. one? Redirects the light to the reader. Again, these phosphors are three-dimensional, so light's going to be emitted in all directions, so we want the light to be going towards the reader. Um, which is which is the photo multiplier tube. Actually, I should put photo multiplier tube right here. And then um, I think the next one, did I say? The lead. The lead prevents the backscatter. The binder supports the barium um, phosphorus, chlorohalide phosphorus. Was that it? Mm -hmm. yeah. So make sure you, you know about the different layers and their purpose. Okay, so we talked about CR and how that was a good transition from screen film radiography into digital radiography. We didn't call it digital, we call it computerized. So that's um, how we transitioned um, from one to the other. Um, and so now, going into digital radiography, this is when you don't have an imaging plate reader and you don't really have a plate anymore with the phosphor. Okay, this is where the detector is built into the system. So that's the difference between the two. And as I said before, most of your hospitals have, um, have a combination. Um, but again, everybody is transitioning now to all digital. Um, as I said before, I think the federal government is reimbursing uh, Medicare, Medicaid, as long as the equipment is digital. So I think that starts next year. So everyone's in a push to get the digital equipment. Mammography has to be digital now. There's no exception to that. So um, there are two types of digital radiography. And one is um, the indirect method. The other one is the direct method. So in the indirect method, x-rays are converted to light 
which are convert which converts to electrons, and that's where we get our digital signal. So it's not too different than what we're doing with the imaging plates. Now let me tell you, anytime the whole purpose of X-rays to light, it takes very little X-ray energy to produce a lot of light energy. So that's been our big savior with our patient protection. That started with the screens, the screens that we used with film. A little bit of X-ray energy, a lot of light Im Im um, energy, and that made the image on our <coughs> film appear. It was more by light than it was by X-ray, so that greatly reduced patient exposure. So we love our phosphors in that. That's why we have them. And there are some phosphors that are better than others. Um, and so, but the problem with this, while it does reduce patient exposure, we know it, in, it um, does what to our detail? Decreases. Decreases our detail. Remember you saw the um, uh, cardboard image that, that I had up here on um, the resolution test pattern that did not have screens with it. Remember you can see all the way to the end of the resolution test tool. If you did not see that, I'll be glad to show it to you again. It's just amazing the clarity that you get without screens. However, we have decided <laughs> that it's not worth the patient exposure to get that type of detail. So we love our light for patient re reduction and x-ray exposure, but it we, we do pay a price for that. Um, and then the, the direct method is we get rid of the light, we don't have that, and x-rays are just converted to electrons, and electrons um, give us our image. So that's another method, another way to go. So which one would be, you can imagine this one right here, the direct method is going to increase patient exposure, but do what to detail? Increase it. So it's, it's just the opposite. Now I will tell you right now that it's not a huge difference in patient exposure. Both methods are very sensitive and certainly outdo film. Um, however, I will tell you, and, and your book mentions this, film is still the gold standard. Film still has better detail than any of these two methods at this time. Okay, so a CCD, this is a light, uh, a light sensing element that's made of silicon and um, is very sensitive to light. It is very small and it gives us, uh, as I've talked to you before about with CR, the same thing with digital, we have tens of thousands of shades of gray that we cannot even appreciate with our own eyes. I think our eyes can see 32 shades of gray, give or take, whereas the system will give us 10,000 shades of gray. So that's why, as I showed you before, uh, last week I showed you the, the sensitometry curve or the characteristic curve in relationship to the um, digital curve or straight line, and it's, we can, there's just so much more gray scale in digital. And then this is a very small size, which is um, nice. Now here's how this works. Now we're talking about the detector here. We're talking about the x-ray detector that's, that I won't let you touch. <laughs> the one in the table, right? Um, so again, they're, they're manufactured different ways. So here's some of the things that can be done. So we can use a CCD, and these are the CCD elements down here. Um, a little bit of silicon is used in these, and we'll. Um, um, and this is the light sensing element. This is um, the uh, cesium iodide phosphor. Cesium iodide is a very popular phosphor that's used um, with our film screen and um, with our uh, digital. Uh, I always tell the students, anytime you take a test and it gives you phosphors and which one's the best or whatever, just go for the cesium iodide. That's, what, you know, that's just very, very, Common. There are other ones, gadolinium oxysulfide is another one that can be used. Um, but again, this is just a phosphor, and what does the phosphor do? X-ray energy hits this phosphor and is converted into light. light. So the light goes down these fiber optics. Remember, this, these fiber optics keep the light going in the right direction. We don't want it going up here also. 
So the light comes down here in these fiber optics to the light sensing element, which is a CCD, and then that is what gives us our signal, our digital signal. Um, it says the resolution is about five line pairs per millimeter, which is um, actually pretty good. Um, I think we might be able to see with our eyes, and, and it depends what pair of eyes you're looking at, but um, I think around seven. So that um, cardboard, I keep calling it cardboard, um, the um, radiograph I had up without screens, that's 10 lines per, per millimeter, maybe even 15. So um, just to kind of give you an idea, you know, why have 10 or 15 if you can't visually appreciate it? So it's better to go down in patient dose than to have that exquisite detail that is really nice, but it's, there's a compromise in there. Um, okay, so this is a cesium iodide with um, the CCD. So again, um, there's another element that can be used rather than the CCD, and that's called the TFT. A TFT. And you're just going to go nuts with all the acronyms. You're just going to go nuts with it all, but you need to know what it stands for. A thin film transistor. When I first studied this, I thought I thought we weren't doing film. Well, <laughs> where's the film coming in? And it makes me laugh, smile every time I think about this, because it took me a while to figure it out. So actually, what a TFT is, is um, another receiver of the electrical signal um, and it says it's a microcircuit array of silicon that is spread out thin like a, a thin film like wh where do you get a thin film i'm thinking bathtub where i mean where else you know what i mean and that's what they're talking about like a film like a layer of film it's like funny. like soap scum film, <laughs> right? So, I think it's a weird name. I don't think of, anyway, but that's what it's named, <laughs> TFT. It's a thin film <laughs> transistor. Okay, so um, thin is a film, I guess. Um, it, it's, it's such as glass. So anyway, here you have um, your pixels, your, uh, your phosphor again, uh, and these would be down here, these would be your TFTs. Rather than the CCD, you would have a TFT. And this is um, kind of what it looks like. You don't have to label this, know the layers or anything like that, but here is your semiconductor. What, il what material is the TFT made of? Silicon. Silicon. And you do need to know that. That's So again, this is just a cutaway of your detector um, in DR. So you've got this uh, <clears throat> matrix of TFTs here, and that is um, your, your pixel, basically. So you have your array, you have your photodiodes, your TFTs. You might or might not have the phosphor, depending on if you're indirect or direct um, DR. Okay, so um, let's see. Okay, uh, here you have your cesium iodide that emits light. Um, you have your TFTs that contain, it, and your book calls this amorphous silicon. Um, it's, it's not solid and it's not liquid, it's an in between. So I'm, I don't care about the amorphous so much, that's just describing its consistency. So it's silicon, basically. But you always see this little A, and that's what that means. Um, and again, gallium oxysulfide is another one that can be used. I want you to know both of those. So the light um, is detected by the um, photodiodes, and that's stored. And then um, when it is um, ready to be read, then um, the TFTs will um, release the um, electrons that it's stored for the signal. <clears throat> and here again, it's just another picture. This one's out of your book. Remember, this is what your TFT is. So um, here you have, this is right here in each corner represents the TFT. This is the fill factor here. This is a part that's sensitive to um, radiation. And then you have your storage capacitor, um, and that's 
photo capacitor does, it just stores um, electrons right here. And then uh, when it's read out, it will emit the electrons from here. So fill factors are about 80%. The more the fill factor is, um, the more sensitive this um, pixel is to radiation. So we would want a, a larger, usually it's, it won't get any, it won't be 100% because you have to have room for your storage capacitor in your TFT here. So um, it can't be typically over 80%. It can certainly be less than 80% you won't get as good a quality if it's less. So the fill factor is a percentage that's sensitive to x-rays, as I said. As the fill factor gets larger, meaning more towards the 80%, better resolution. As it is lower, less resolution. Okay, when we do not have the um, cesium iodide or the gadolinium oxysulfide, when we don't have those, then we're going to use something different, and that is selenium. Um, selenium is not a phosphor. Selenium is not a phosphor. What it does, it em when x-rays hit it, it emits electrons. So not light, but electrons. It's an electrical conductor. So x-rays interact with the selenium, it releases um, electrons, the TFT stores it, and then <clears throat> presents it on the monitor for viewing. So this is what's used for direct, right? This would be direct, uh -huh, selenium. Selenium is the material of choice. So no phosphors on this method. Right, isn't that what direct is? We're just looking at electrons, we're skipping that whole light bit. And so again, x-rays, here's your TFT, here's your fill factor, there's your storage capacitor. This is all of your pixel right here. So electrons hit and release the electrons. Okay, so that's all it does, no light at this point. And so with, again, just to compare with the, um, the phosphors, we have decrease in patient does, and it says it has a high DQE. Do you know what DQE is? You're gonna need to make sure you know this. You'll be hearing about it more and more as you um, go through your career. Detective quantum efficiency. Detective quantum efficiency. The ability of a material to absorb x-rays. Not not all phosphors are created equal. Some absorb x-rays better and emit light than others. So if we have a higher detector, so in other words, if the detect the um, cesium iodide or the gadolinium oxysulfide, these are used because they're very sensitive to x-rays. There are lesser phosphors. There are so many phosphors, it would make your head spin. But um, these are the two used with indirect digital radiography. And then the cesium, I'm sorry, excuse me, selenium, there's no phosphor with that, no light spread, therefore your um, resolution is better. So just once again, so make sure you do know the comparison between the two. So this again, um, your book has a different picture um, than this, but it's somewhat similar, just showing um, the light spread screen film versus um, the cesium iodide versus the selenium, and you can see the lights. There's no light spread here, so um, that's what makes it better quality, higher quality. So instead of having a um, bucky tray like we do in our back room, as you see in our front room, um, you, the detector is underneath the table. You, you now probably have appreciated all the fine <laughs> things that go along with digital radiography with these new machines and how the, the tracking feature, has everyone been in the front room now and had their hands on it? If you have not, then you need to do that. Um, I was, well, I wasn't laughing at you, kind of. Uh, some of you were so scared to touch anything in there. Don't be, we're under warranty. So you break anything, we'll get, we'll get it fixed. Um, except there's one thing that's not under warranty and that's that detector. That's like $100,000 if we drop it. And if we drop it, it will break. 
So that's why. That's the only thing I'm very sensitive about. And you know what? I mean, what's the worst thing that can happen if we do drop it? And like I said, I'll probably be the one to do it because <laughs> I'm the only one handling it. So I'll probably drop it at some point. So what do we do? Replace it. Quit. You're, we're done. Sorry, school clubs. Collect donations. No, collect donations. We'll use the graduation fund. <laughs> no, no. What we'll do is we'll go back to CR until I can get money. So we're, you know, we're good. Put breaks. We're good still. So don't be afraid to touch the equipment and use the equipment um, because it's just so nice. And um, and again. You're going. What's going to be hard on on you poor little things? You're going to have. You're going to be going back and forth between the two rooms. So this one has the tracking feature. The back room does not. So you'll have to manually line up your X-ray tube and your image receptor. So you're going to have to remember all the things that this room does that that room does not do. Yes. Well, usually on comps, you'll have to ask Dr. Francis. Since we have not been in this room that long, um, I, I don't know. Uh, you'll have to ask him. Historically, you have comps and you never know which room you're going to be in. So you have to be ready for both. You know, so you have to know all those idiosyncrasies of the room. Um, what we do in here that's quite different than what I've grown up with, even with CR, um, is that this room has the capability to have the grid out. Why did we use the Bucky? And we haven't lectured on that in here, but why do we use the Bucky tray in the back room? For certain thicknesses. Okay, we use it for parts bigger than 10 centimeters. Why? Because what's above that tray? The grid. Is the grid. So when anything um, over 10, 10 centimeters, I've seen some books say 13 centimeters. You, you know, it's not etched in stone. Um, but if you use the Becky tray in that back room, you have to use the grid. So can you do a hand on the tabletop in that back room? Yes, but you have to increase the mass about four times to compensate for the loss of exposure you're going to get with the grid. Who would want to do that, right? We don't do that. In this room, though, we can take the grid out and use the detector underneath. Okay, we have several options in this front room. We can open up the, tr the um, tray, take the detector out, and put it on top of the table and use it like a CR cassette. And I think that's what a lot of your facilities do. But we won't do that. But we're not going to do that because every time we take it out and put it on the table, we have the potential <laughs> to <laughs> drop it. Okay, so I elect to leave it in the tray and take the grid out. Your hospitals, are, not all of them will be able to do that, to take the grid out. I know at St. Jude's, because I worked with um, uh, Pawn on Thursday, <coughs> she said her facilities aren't able to take out the grid. So I concluded that our equipment is better than <laughs> So for once, this is just such a moment for me that we're ahead of the hospitals here, you know, so, um, enjoy it while we can <laughs> and so um, so you, you have to remember those idiosyncrasies so anyway what happened what took us what 15 minutes for those of you who were here it kept it kept saying and it'll tell you what's wrong this new these new um, radiology rooms will tell you what you're not doing right and it said line up the x-ray tube to the to the um, detector well we kept is cracked. It lines up, you know, you move the x-ray tube a little bit, doesn't it track? We didn't detent across. That's what it meant by lining up. So unlike in the back room where you have your cassettes on top and it doesn't matter about detent because you're, you're looking right at it, you can't do that. With the hand x-ray you've got in this room, you've got to detent that if you're using the detector underneath the table. Okay, so that was something I've ne never in my life detented for a hand x-ray, <laughs> so it was weird, you know, because we do it on top of the table, so anyway. Um, so anyway, that's what you're working with now, you know, you take an x-ray, uh, again in our uh, front room, you can raise this up, the x-ray tube will go with it. Remember, this is, um, uh, Kim Deanda said this is the master, and so what this one moves up, then the x-ray tube follows. 
but it's just the opposite for the table. Um, and so uh, you get your image immediately. And um, I finally brought myself in that habit. Every time we went to take an x-ray, <laughs> I laugh at myself every time. I take an x-ray and I immediately start to go back into the room to get the cassette, right? <laughs> I don't need to do that. I think I've broken myself into the habit now. Um, there's nothing to go back in there to get except to maybe talk to the patient. So um, the, next, the next thing was after we got our rooms um, in, to direct um, radio, our digital radiography, excuse me, then it was our portables. And so um, now on our portable machines, oh my gosh, even with CR, we had to take a portable and go back to the department and process the CR plate to determine if the image came out all right. And um, you did have the ability to uh, adjust your density and contrast, which was fine. Um, just if you clipped that, you know, parts of the lungs or if you clipped anatomy, didn't position correctly, then you had to repeat it. Um, now, again, you're gonna be able to see your image immediately. You don't have to go process anything. Whether it's in film, it was chemical processing, in uh, digital is electronic processing. So we still call it processing or reading the image. So this is all done uh, right here. The, um, the, to give you some history, the first digital we had, um, we just used CR. For, we had a digital room, just used CR for portables. Then we got the new portable machines and the detector was tethered to the portable machine. So you bring the portable machine into the room and make sure it's close enough. And it was a pretty long tether you could put behind the patient and then do your x-ray like that. Um, then um, after that, they came up with the wireless detectors. And so now it's not tethered and you can um, use that detector and get your image um, immediately. Uh, there are problems with that, of course, just like, just like my gateway or just like at home or just like in any building you can lose the wireless system once you've lost that for whatever reason it's down something's going haywire with the system um, I know they have made images and don't receive the image because of the it got lost somewhere so it's not a hundred percent perfect but it's certainly um, a lot better so um, again, this is just um, another review, and um, let's look at the digital image itself. So we know the digital image is made up of pixels, and each of these pixels have a number based on the amount of radiation it has received, okay? And so um, you're gonna get all these different numbers, and each one of these numbers represents a shade of gray. Uh, one thing about digital radiography is that your resolution cannot be any better than your pixel size. So um, we're limited with how much uh, quality we're going to get. Again, with, with film, we, don't, we aren't limited to that. And so um, that's why, again, film is going to have better resolution. So um, again, each pixel is, uh, has a number awarded a, a shade of gray, and then all these pixels are, can be um, graphed according to the frequency, meaning the, the number of times this shade of maybe this shade of gray has been, um, been seen versus um, the values. So um, again, just showing you the, the graph, we're gonna come back to this later. Um, but we, it, this graph is called a histogram, and for different body parts, it's going to look different. A hand versus a chest x-ray, for example. So let's look at some terminology. Um, with the acquisition, there's ac acquisition pixel size and display pixel size. And so um, the acquisition is inherent to the system, so um, I'm talking about the digital detector here. And then here I'm talking about the monitor, displaying the image on what the monitor. So you can have a beautiful detector that has high spatial resolution and then it goes to the monitor and your monitor is subpar, which is typically what, <laughs> is exactly what it is. 
our monitors, and I've said this several times now, our monitors that we have to look at the image after we've taken it is for, is for critiquing the image. Like you look at an x-ray, is to critique it, making sure all your anatomy is on there, the position is done correctly, um, and it's not for diagnostic purposes. So that would be the radiologist monitor that we've talked about before, the nice big ones that are very expensive and the resolution on those is much higher than what that we have at our workstations. So, um, so the acquisition pixel size, 